Hi, this is Lou. Welcome to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you what I do with the seamless repeating patterns that I've been drawing. So in last week's video, I showed you the process of making, drawing and colouring in this uh, repeating floral pattern. And uh, what you end up with is a little square of, of cardboard. And you can do all sorts of things with it once you get it into the computer. And I'm going to show you that right now. So I scan in my image and I bring it into Photoshop. And the first thing that I need to do is to square it up and to get rid of the white background that comes from the, the scanner bed. So I pull down a guide from the, uh, the ruler at the top and that helps me to get it nice and straight. And then I can use the select tool to select that square and get rid of any of the, uh, the white surrounding space. So when I'm happy with my selection, I just crop the image to the selection. Now I can zoom into the image and tidy it up a little bit. So the first obvious thing is that where my card was cut, I've got a little black line running through the whole image. Uh, now where it's on the white background, I simply use the eraser tool to get rid of that. But you can see that on the coloured areas, if I use the eraser tool, I'd end up with a white line. So that's not really going to work very well. So instead, I use a clone tool. I go into each area and create a little bit where I clone out the, uh, the coloured line there by copying from an area that's close to it and kind of pasting it over the top. So you'll have a line in your image that kind of goes from the centre of the top down to the bottom and then a similar one horizontally across the middle. And at this stage, it's a case of going through those lines and just neatening them up. And I mainly use the clone tool for this. The way the clone tool works is that you uh, hit option on a Mac and uh, click in an area that you want to copy from and then you go into the area where there's a blemish or a mark that you want to remove and it copies that one area and kind of pastes it over the top of the other. So my scanner can often leave images with a slightly faded look so the blacks aren't really very black and uh, sometimes the paper can look a little grey as well. So in order to fix that, I'm creating a new adjustment layer and I'm going to use the levels. And that gives you a little histogram over there on the right. And I just pull down from the top a tiny bit so that the white of the paper is truly white. And then I bring up the, uh, the bottom level to where the color starts going up, the histogram starts going up. And that's where the black is so that I know that my blacks are truly black and my whites are truly white. And then I merge those layers together and use that to create a pattern. So you go into edit and define pattern and give it a name. And then that allows you to use that pattern to fill spaces. So if I create a new document, an A3 one, because A3 is the biggest size of paper I can print. And then I can use the paint bucket tool to fill that with my pattern that I've just uh, created. So just select it from the menu and fill your space with the pattern. And that allows you to see whether the repeat works or not. And I can see in this that there are some white lines down the side. And this happened because I wasn't really all that careful when I stuck my paper together. Um, I usually try and be very careful and sometimes it just slips a little bit. Um, and uh, that I fix by copying the top and copying the bottom and making sure they line up nicely. So that new pattern, we'll try that one again. Um, again, let's go to create a new document, uh, fill it with a uh, paint pot tool 
and you can see that this one repeats a lot better and there's no white lines left. There are, however, around the outside some darker lines that I noticed when I did that pattern repeat. And I can go in and again with the clone tool, get rid of any of those darker lines. I can spend quite a long time making sure that everything is to my satisfaction and that all of the repeats line up and sometimes it involves moving things around on the page a little bit. Uh, but once I'm happy with it, uh, there are a few things that I can do with it. And uh, one of the things that is quite fun to do is to use a mock-up to see how your pattern might look when it's repeated on a product. So this is a mock-up that I, I found for free. I didn't design this one, it's somebody else's, and I'll put a link down below to where you can find it. And I want to change the design of the cover. So I go into the layer on the layer panels on the right, and it says something like design, and it said edit this. And uh, if you double click on that, it will open up in a new uh, little tab. And this is a smart object, so that whatever you create in here will be kind of warped to fit the notebook. So I want to put my pattern in here. So I can create a new layer. And if I create a new layer and then select Pattern Fill, then it allows you to scale your pattern as well. So you can decide how, how many uh, repeats you want, and you can scale it to fit the object that you're making. And when you're happy with it and you save it, you go back to the original, you'll see that your pattern has replaced the design that was already there. So this is another mock-up because this uh, shows you what your uh, repeat pattern might look like if it's printed as a fabric. And I'm doing exactly the same thing again. Click on the smart object. It opens up in a new tab, create a new layer, uh, scale the pattern, save it, and then when you go back into the original, you can see what your pattern might look like as a fabric and made up into a dress. So in order to get your designs onto real products, uh, there are a couple of options. There are sites like Redbubble and Society6 is another one where you can create an account and upload your designs and then you could order them printed onto phone cases, books, coasters, clocks, duvet covers, shower curtains, all sorts of things. You can order these for yourself, but you can also promote this site and allow other people to go on and order your products and then you get a, a bit of commission from the site. So I hope you have fun creating some repeating patterns. And if you follow any of these tutorials, I'd really like to see the results. If you post stuff on Instagram, you can always tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. And I'm on Facebook too at Lou Davis Artist and Maker. If you've liked what you've seen today and you'd like to see more of it, then uh, comment below or like it or subscribe to the channel or all of the above. Um, I really like to hear back from you about what you've enjoyed and what you've liked and what you'd like to see in the future. So uh, please do keep in touch and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye.